Pakistan manages to weaponize its communities abroad, whereas India manages to weaponize its communities abroad against itself. Because the loudest, shrillest voices you hear against India are NRLs. So uh, uh, there is that. But you know, when we say it's the end of the road for Pakistan, sorry to bring it back to FATF, I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. Uh, the Pakistani feudal elite who control society, that is the so-called industrialists, the so-called military, and the so-called landowners, they, they're all the same families. They pretend to be different categories. They're all the same families intermarried into each other. The father will be a sugar farmer. The uh, daughter will be the wife of uh, the chief of army staff. Uh, the son-in-law will be... Uh, 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 a, a landowner or something like that. So uh, they treat, they all have dual citizenship and they treat Pakistan as that sort of the same way we got rid of the zamindari system. They treat it as the absentee landlord who wants to milk it for everything it's worth, but they're not interested in growing it for what it's worth. So as long as they continue to have their dual citizenships uh, in uh, wherever, in, there's a huge number of them in Boston. Uh, we know that uh, Norway is swamped by them. Uh, half of Mayfair is owned by Pakistanis in London. Um, uh, Dubai, again, lots of the Pakistani elite families live there. Uh, Zardari lives there full time. His children live there full time. Uh, when people make fun of Rahul Gandhi, I'm like, at least Rahul Gandhi is still better than the Zardari the Bhuttos and what they do. Or the Nawaz Sharifs also. They hardly spend any time in Pakistan proper. Uh, army generals, none of their families are in Pakistan proper. They all live abroad. They all have dual citizenship. 